Hello. Here we are. Welcome to Talking Small Press Comics once again. This is episode 19 with Steve Keeter and myself, Larna Justin. And we're excited. We've got another jam-packed show. So uh, stay with us and uh, you'll find out about some really cool comics. Right, Steve? You bet. We've been, we've been receiving a lot of comics, too. Yep. Uh, so. uh, partly because we ordered some of them, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we paid for and, some. But. but, you know, hopefully the word's getting out, too. And uh, yeah. you, know, you guys uh, just keep sending your stuff. You're great. And we'll review it. And, uh, um, yep. yeah, we're ready to go. Yeah. The first one up is going to be The Masked Avenger from Canada, actually. Yeah. Alejandre Michaud. Mm-hmm. Issue number and six. You know what? I thought when I first started looking at this that the masked Avenger was a superhero. But he's not. He's a wrestler. Look at he's the Yeah. Look at the uh, picture. You can see the wrestling mask. And then he sent me a sticker. So on the sticker, you can actually at the bottom see the wrestling boots. <laughs> so the Masked Avenger is a wrestler, which I didn't quite catch right away, but he is. <laughs> yeah, and uh, this is one heck of a zine. I mean, oh my gosh, the artwork in here. Uh, professional, beyond professional, better than professional. I mean, this is... Uh, this Corey Furman. Corey Furman. Are you watching, hey. Is that the same one I'm looking at? Mm, I think that's Paige. Yeah, um, the Satanic Mummies. Satanic story. Mummies of Chicago. And I used to live in Chicago, and I can guarantee you there's a number of Satanic <laughs> Mummies in Chicago, at least when I was there. Yeah. This lady here is a nun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, if all, if all, the, if all nuns were... That good looking, I think church would be a lot more popular. Well, I went to Catholic school, and uh, I can tell you they were not. But it would have been great if they were. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. But it's a great issue. And that, this is, this is what amazes me. If you mm -hmm. just look at this one panel of the horses in the carriage, mm -hmm. the amount of work that's in that, for a small, you know, just a quick read panel is amazing. Look at that. It really is. It really is. It kind of deserves to be seen at, at a larger size, you know? Yeah. But I, it's um, just, um, the artwork is just amazing. The full size uh, artwork must be just not. Oh, yeah. I'd love to see that. Unbelievable. Here's I mean, another. Look at the horses here. Mm -hmm. The detail. It's incredible. Yeah, this guy is a real pro. <laughs> really? Yeah. No and, doubt uh, about it. And actually, you can see the Mask Avenger right here. Yeah. He is in the story right yeah. there. And he's not afraid of anything. He'll tackle no. mummies or, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know? uh, and then later on. Avengers are amazing. Um. Corey Furman has another story, which is Lancelot. Now, I yeah. was trying to figure out, a, is this the standard Sir Lancelot, you know, that's uh, in the Knights of the Round Table? Yeah, but he I've been trying to figure that out, too. He, he does not seem to be that same Lancelot, I don't think. He is um, a knight, but I don't think he's intended to be you know, Sir Lancelot of the Round Table. Yeah, it's not exactly the same. Not like you like you would, would have seen in a medieval type movies. Right. Yeah, he doesn't dress in armor and all that yeah. kind of thing. And he goes up against. Uh, but here we go again. Uh, firm, uh, this this guy uh, is he can draw beautiful women. Oh yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, this particular beautiful woman develops a long snout and he becomes <laughs> a wolf. And he can draw scary skulls. Look at that. 
Yeah. <laughs> There's a gritty look to it all. I mean, it's oh, yeah. dark and it's gritty and it is it's outstanding. just outstanding. I, I can't, I could I couldn't recommend this, uh, this, this scene. This, uh, Corey Furman, what, what, what an amazing. You need what to, a great you know, artist. Look at the waterfall. Take a note and remember this guy. Look at mm -hmm. that waterfall. Isn't that something? Yeah. Utterly realistic. Yeah. Really good. And then there's uh, another story in here. Part I, two. Yeah. If I can find this by uh, Del yeah. Barris. It's the Kid Cop Squad. Kids Cop Squad by Del, uh, Del, Del Barris. Del. And I'm here, look at this. This artwork is kind of just the opposite of what uh, Furman was doing. This is very mm -hmm. clean cut. Very clean, very neat. Very, very neat. You know, there's no real uh, line shading, you know. Uh, but excellent, excellent work. It's a, it's a wild, kind of a fascinating story to it. It's kind of the origin story of the kid cop squad. Mm -hmm. You know, and what you got is you've got, well, there's like, what look like robots and stuff like that in this story. And uh, right. people, people going through transformations. But um, these people who are being transformed are adults. They're adult people. So I'm, yeah. I'm like, I lost track a little while. I'm reading the story and I said, what happened to the kids? Where's the kid <laughs> cop squad? Where are they? There they are. And there they are. Yeah. In the last page. Yep. Yep. So, so the adults are transformed. Into the kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. I, mean, I wish I had a machine like that. I could go back. A few I wouldn't years mind. Ago. Yeah. Going back to the <laughs> cop kids. Yeah. <laughs> just a beautiful zoom. Just a wonderful. This is a, this uh, drawing here was what made me think he was a superhero. I was looking at this and oh yeah, it's another superhero story. Yeah. But a, not really. <laughs> he's a hero and he's tough. And, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, we've been reading the 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 last few issues and the adventures. He goes through a lot. He, go, he comes up against uh, monsters and vampires and all kinds of stuff. And um, he's a. It's not your typical comic book, you know. So here's a novel, an ad for a Mastic Avenger novel, right there. So. There's a lot to this. Yeah, there's a lot of text fiction in previous issues. This issue is different because this issue mm -hmm. is almost completely comics. Uh, the last few issues had a lot of text fiction in them, which was really good. And stories by Alejandro Michaud, Alex, Alex, let's say Alex for short. And uh, well, this particular issue has a very little. And text he said fiction. the uh, inspiration, I guess, for the Masked Avenger was Santo. There's a whole bunch of Santo comic covers. Right. And there's all the these posters, here. these movie posters. Yeah, or movie poster. I guess it was a movie, a not movie a comic. Or a, or a series. And it looks like a nostalgia. Before the Master Avenger, there was El Santo. El mm -hmm. Santo. And uh, yeah, it looks like a, a series of movies. Okay. It's probably uh, Mexican movies. Mexican yeah. movies, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. that's what it looks like. <laughs> that's cool to see the posters. There is one bit of, there is a little bit of the text. Uh, Larry Johnson has uh, a, right. uh, an article on Mark Merlin, um, who I remember. I remember reading the adventures of Mark Merlin in the DC comics of the 1960s. That one I do not remember. But uh, yeah, interesting I, I article. A few of them, but he he was in House of Secrets. House uh -huh. of Secrets. Yeah. And you know sometimes you can find copies of House of Secrets, you know, at your local comic shop, hmm. and you know they're not expensive. You know they're they you know they weren't as big as Superman or the Avengers or whatever, but you can find copies, and sometimes you find some real gems there. Hmm. And um, what I found interesting because I didn't read the entire series. Yeah. Was that Mark Merlin, who's a magician, uh, I think, 
been a while since I read them, and Larry explains it all here, but he died. He died at one point and was reborn, resurrected, as an entirely different character. <laughs> Prince, Prince really? Raman. Oh, okay. So when he's reborn, he looks like this. Ah, uh, okay. He comes up, kind of reincarnated, you know? Yeah, yeah. I hmm. didn't know that until I read Larry Johnson's article. Um, so fascinating history. Larry's a great writer. Always a pleasure to read his stuff. Right, right. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, let's see here. This is uh, five ninety nine, And we'll yeah. have his contact information up in Canada. That's a deal. In the description. That is a deal. Five ninety nine is a deal. Ninety nine, yeah. For I don't a great know if that's look like this. Canadian or American? I don't He's, know. But that's right. Well, <laughs> that's a good question there. <laughs> <laughs> usually, when I order something from Canada, I just put like one extra stamp on it, and that usually works. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many pages this is, but it's fairly thick. Yeah. You can see that. Nice quality quality printing and oh, production quality. nice, all nice the way binding through. there yeah yep all the way through absolutely professional quality well how about uh taking a look at heroes now the latest one from tom felrath now 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 heroes heroes now now <laughs> now is the time for heroes <laughs> Okay, we're we're both we're huge fans of Tom Felrath. Okay? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and um, he did Heroes back then. Um, he, he had another book, like he, Heroes Past. What was it called? Heroes Past. Yeah, I think it was Heroes Past. Excuse me, I'm getting old. I can't remember things from this <laughs> second to that. But anyway, yeah, and that was a great zine and had a lot you know, reprints of some of the stuff that. Um, that Tom published back in the late 1980s. Mm -hmm. And uh, here they are. These heroes are revived in new adventures now. And um, Scott McClung does uh, a story here uh, that Tom wrote. And uh, small press artist. Scott this McClung. is a, a revived character, kind of. Um, she's a superhero, has a family and everything, and decides to go back into the superhero business. <laughs> the accelerator. Accelerator. Yeah. The accelerator. Yeah. So it's like, you know, um, you know, almost middle-aged mom. Yeah. And um, suddenly decides, uh, you know, she's had these superpowers for a long time. She's raising a family and everything, just being a mom. Yeah. And, um, oh, there's a flood. There's a disaster that she thinks yep. she can probably help out. So yeah. she does. So she goes into action again. And then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I guess she likes it. And she says, well, then maybe I'll stick around and start doing <laughs> this superhero stuff again. Uh, so, you know, uh, um, Tom does an interesting thing and he, he does it quite a bit. He starts the story out, just starts the story. Then when you get a couple pages in, he puts the title in the middle. Right. Kind of. <laughs> Yeah, Once you start it, you know, it's kind of like movies have been done, done that way. Sometimes they'll start the story and then the, the title yep. will come on. Tom uses that quite a bit. And it's an effective uh, sort of device. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this issue also has uh, some other heroes. There's right. a hint of a rebirth of the light. It doesn't really show the light, but that's one of his old characters. But... So, I didn't I didn't know why this uh newspaper page was in here exactly. Um I think it's a teaser. Uh, just for the light, you think? Mm -hmm. I wasn't quite sure. And um this is the light by uh, Lance Doc Butcher. Luck Doc Butcher or Boucher. Anyway, uh -huh. Doc how do you pronounce your last name? I know you're watching this. <laughs> I always said Butcher, but I may be wrong. Could be, I don't could know. be Butcher. You know, that's what mm -hmm. I that's the way it looks to me. But uh this is a, a illo by him from a while back. That's the light. So there's this hero. But it doesn't have a complete story in this particular issue. So there's something to look forward to. Um then he, but, then he does a Patriots story in here. Right. The and Patriots. if you were wondering 
if you were wondering what happened uh, after the original Patriot, you know, was killed, uh, and uh, what happens next? This is what happens next. Yeah, this is what happens, and you don't. Once again, Tom doesn't put the uh, title until almost the end of the story. Then he puts the title, it just starts. The Gathering. It just starts. Yeah. And cool. it helps yeah. when he says The Gathering, it kind of helps you understand the last panel here in the book. Yeah. This one. Um, Beautifully illustrated by Tony Lorenz. Tony Lorenz, yeah. yeah. One, one of our favorite uh, artists. The Patriots in, in this... Yeah, they have to go through and kind of a, I would call initiation. They have a time limit on each thing that they have to do. And if they don't do it within the time limit, they're not a patriot. So it's interesting because yeah. Jeff, uh, uh, the patriots patriot. original sidekick right. is older now and he's evaluating yep. these new, uh, Patriots for a sort of a, a Patriot team, apparently. That's what he's doing. That's him right there. Yeah. And uh, so, and two out find of out three. who makes, you know, by reading this, you find out, you can find out who makes it to the Patriots and who doesn't. Interesting. The guy that does good stuff. It. That's kind of interesting. It's good yeah. reading. Um, this one's four dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me see if it has a page. I got to say one thing. Uh, 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 there's this guy, and he's a, uh, I've seen him online for a long time in his artwork, Guido Vision. Mm -hmm. Guido Vision, and his artwork is incredible, and he has the inside front cover, um, which is, uh, what, what's his name? The laser, laser disc. Laser disc, uh, yeah. Guido Vision, just look at yeah. that. Cool. You know? Very cool. I see this stuff on Facebook, uh, uh -huh. the U United Fanzine Organization uh, group, the public group. He, he publishes there a lot. He, put, he and every day is something new, and uh, wow, what what a talent! Yep. Yeah. And I like that back cover by back Scott. Back cover, McCall. I was going to say, right. yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the accelerator right there. Yeah, <laughs> Scott McClung. Great Kudos stuff. To Scott McClung, always great stuff from him. Oh, oh yeah. he's one of the best. Always. Okay, what do we got next here? Collector's fanzine. We can do that. All right. That's Alan Sissom. Alan Sissom's collector's fanzine. Mm -hmm. Collector's link fanzine. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you want to see some amazing art. A lot of you know about Brad Foster. Maybe some of you don't, but this, here's the back cover. Yeah. You were showing off the front cover, right? But that's yeah. also this by is the Brad back Foster. Yeah. yeah. Look at this. Look at that. And the interesting thing is there's a whole interview with Brad, Brad Foster in the book. So Conducted by Jim Maine. Yeah. Jim Maine interviews him. Let me see if I can find that so I can show you a picture. If I can find it. <laughs> here it is and there is brad foster that's brad yeah. <laughs> i met brad one time oh have you uh, oh great well, he's apparently uh i didn't know it uh until i read this interview but he's been around since 1972 in small press i met him in the 86 or 87 at the chicago comics convention and i remember at the time um uh, we exchanged a couple of zines, and I uh, I used to sign my name. My name is Steve Keeter, so the mm -hmm. first initial is S, and the last name is Keeter. And it, if you if you just S dot Keeter, it comes out Skeeter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I quit signing it that way, but Brad, uh, I remember he asked me to sign something for him, and I signed it. And he goes, he looked at me and he went Skeeter. <laughs> 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 it was a little embarrassing, but I explained it to him. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, no hard yeah. feelings. He's a great artist, great talent. Yeah. Look at that cartoon there. <laughs> yeah, the thinking caveman. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, so great article about him in here. Um, and of course, our good friend Larry Johnson has a story in here. Gray Silk. Gray Silk. Which is fascinating. And this is a, that, quite, and a, and quite a lengthy little story here. Yeah, it's an adaptation of a story written by Rick Howell. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of us remember Rick Howell. He passed away, you know, well, at least a yeah. decade or so ago. But um, he wrote a text story like this, and he was a great writer. Rick was Rick was a super superb writer. Uh, he used to review small press comics, and he went in depth. And his, it was always interesting. Yeah, there's a picture of a. Of there's Rick a picture of Rick Howell, right and he used to send me quite a few things. Ah, always. Yeah. And uh, when I was doing the Buffalo, uh, White Buffalo Gazette, he used to contribute to that. And uh, he used to send me, uh, he did a cart, a uh, comic, kind of a serious one. I, the name slips by me. I wonder if it's in this article. Um, <laughs> I can't remember right now. <laughs> topical. It was called Topical, topical Studies. Topical Studies. Yeah. He would topical always studies. send me uh, uh, a copy of uh, Topical Studies. <laughs> it was amazing because he talked about small press comics, and he wasn't flipping. He didn't just dismiss things. Oh, this was good. This was bad. He went in-depth yeah. into comics, and, mm -hmm. and uh, one review would go on for pages, and uh -huh. it was fascinating. It was a little flattering to see someone – paying that much attention uh, to the work that you had done, you know. Doesn't um, Mike Tuz, doesn't he do that also? Mike, Mike Tuz. Tuz. He does Mike, that too. He's one of the In best. Depth. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't see much artwork these days. Mark, uh, Mike Tuz can draw and he can write, but hmm. uh, basically he writes great letters of comments. Yeah. His they're comments. articles in themselves. Yeah. But before we forget now, there is another story in here called Crimson Dawn. Can I can I say something about this gray silk story? Could it, if you read oh, yeah. the story, this is it's a strange story. You mm -hmm. got this woman, this lady, who was a princess in her time, and uh, she discovers uh, through a series of events, she discovers the secret of eternal life, or almost eternal life and slows down the aging process. The thing is, she finds that whenever she moves or any slight move would accelerate the aging process. So oh. she wanted to stay young forever. She ends up wrapping herself up like a mummy and just laying there. And not <laughs> doing anything. That's a great existence. <laughs> I mean, and this, yeah. And so this is her, you know, even the guy she's in love with, you know, he, he commits suicide, you know, he can't deal with it. And, um, yeah, look, and the art, Larry Johnson's artwork, always, always, always good. Much appreciated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Such nice work. Yeah. And, uh, but that's her existence. Okay. She's found eternal life. She can't move. She can't she move anything. or she do anything. So it's exactly like being dead. Right. Basically. It's a different, <laughs> a different kind of death. So that's really weird. And it's ironic too, you know? Yeah. And Larry Johnson did a great adaptation of the story. I just wanted to mention this Viral Holt Bond story is also in here, The Crimson Dawn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's in there. That's about uh, that's With about Viral's three or four pages of long. artwork. Mm -hmm. uh, that, two people... It's a post-apocalyptic story. Yeah, and he and wrote a, the story also. He right. wrote it and illustrated it. And he illustrated it. Uh, mm -hmm. His 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 art his art is so uh, very realistic. Yeah. And these two people meet each other in battle. It's a man and a woman, and she's bald because she's been exposed to radiation, and uh, they have a they have a fight. He wins the fight. She's slightly wounded, but she's not dead. Then they end up falling in love naturally beginning yeah. they have a, a child beginning to rebuild civilization after the holocaust yeah. so <laughs> yeah it's a cool story it's kind of moving also has the xenology report by alan system right. reviews well, a number alan of publications stuff. here 
Mm -hmm. It will give you an idea of something you might want to order. Alan is a, he's great at reviewing, uh, you know, he's mm -hmm. he the nail on the head, talking about specifics, and uh, he's great at publishing, he's an excellent writer, excellent artist, and this is an excellent zine. Yeah, it really is, really is. Yeah. It's got a discussions page in the back, people write in, it's got all kinds of things, it'll keep you entertained for quite a while. Great works from Alan Sisson. Excellent publication. Very good. I like that a lot. Well, let's see. Uh, do you have after that? I got Pinocchio. Pinocchio? Okay. Pinocchio and Mr. Hyde. Pinocchio and Mr. Hyde. <laughs> Issue number two. Mm hmm. And this is Adam Rodriguez, and we've talked about him before. Yeah, five bucks. Issue number two, and it's uh, <laughs> he is one interesting fellow. His yeah, artwork takes... is, mm -hmm. you know, very sketchy, uh, very very loose and sketchy. This is Pinocchio in here, <clears throat> and it switches kind of from Pinocchio to. Mr. Hyde, for one thing. Mr. Hyde and <laughs> I'm trying to find the pages, and I just dropped. Right. It is an orangutan. Mr. Hyde and Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur. <laughs> now. Lou knows where you were going. Those two connections <laughs> is amazing, but it nonetheless he does it in here. Yep. yep. And uh, Pinocchio and Mr. Hyde have become pals. If you mm -hmm. saw the previous <laughs> issue, you would They're know friends. about that. Yeah. Uh, here, we, here we have um, Pinocchio passing by the Rue Morgue. Mm -hmm. So there's a little Edgar Allan Poe in there as well. And uh, it's crazy. Adam, uh, Adam is such a genius. He, he takes all these literary characters from and puts them in his books and history. And puts them all together. Uh, I think he says that Pinocchio uh, passes by a uh, caged gorilla. I think it's a gorilla. It's an orangutan. Oh, an orangutan. orangutan. Okay. And yeah. <laughs> the orangutan wants to shave, apparently. <laughs> so, uh, Pinocchio's a good guy. He gives him a blade, yeah, he gives him a razor. And there he is in the back page with the razor. I don't know what he's going to do with that razor. Uh, but if he tries to shave himself, he's going to be full of Band-Aids, I can tell you that. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> amazing it's stuff. It's brilliant. It's so funny. And there's a bunch of little ads for stuff on the back. Yeah. Uh, Adam... Uh, is a great web page. What's this? Hallucinogenic licking frog. Licking frog you can get, and that'll <laughs> cure all your woes. <laughs> you give that frog a lick, you are in good shape after that. Here's, here's a medicine called uh, uh, some tablet, Funk It All. Yeah. Funk, funk it. it All here for life's continuous oh, bull, uh, uh, crap. So... <laughs> I noticed one thing on Adam when he advertises his uh, web page here, uh -huh. misspells his own name, which I think is interesting. He forgets the R in the uh, Rodriguez <laughs> on the bottom, right, the bottom? right down here where he where he puts in the uh, address to the web page. Yeah, he forgets the R in Rodriguez. Adam Rodriguez. <laughs> nope. You're, 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 pointing at, you're pointing at the Academy. On of the back. AWR. The big AWR. AWR. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the back. Look down at the bottom. The bottom of that illustration? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where, it where it's Adam, Adam W. Rodriguez. I see the R, uh, Learned. <laughs> you don't see it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Might be hard. Uh, to there's make an out. arm missing right in front of the eye in Rodriguez. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're yeah. right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. There's another arm. Yeah. Rodriguez. Yeah. Rodriguez. My apologies. There was a technical glitch, folks. Yeah, we had a glitch. We're back now, and we're unglitched. Yeah, and we can talk for at least eight minutes and 51 seconds before yeah, they, yeah. they try to cut us off again. <laughs> Zoom has uh, decided to only allow uh, 40 minutes for the free show, and then unless you uh, want to upgrade. And so far, we haven't upgraded. <laughs> okay, if you missed it, folks, uh, Larned said there was an R missing from uh, Adam Rodriguez's uh, uh, email address. And I said it wasn't missing, but guess what? It was missing. I just didn't hear there's two R's in Rodriguez. Yeah. You forgot <laughs> so one. The second R is missing. Yeah. Uh, right here. <laughs> so if Adam, if you're looking, fix your R. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it. the email works that way. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it does. Oh, no, it doesn't because I tried it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. We got. Um, do you have after that? I don't have that one. Okay. All right. I got Maelstrom. Okay, we'll do Maelstrom. Uh, just a quick note. This is After That by Micah Leisenfeld. Oh. And this is the last one that Micah is going to do. And he's looking for people to take over after that. He took it over. Um, and... He's been doing it for a while, and uh, if you'd like to see this continue, if you like to do this kind of a thing, kind of a review of uh, comics, after that is going to be available. Now, this particular issue is a, an interview with a great little, not a little, a great cartoonist by the name of uh, Dimitri Jackson, who lives in St. Louis here. And here's a little bit of his work. Ooh, nice. Yeah, really, really excellent cartooning. Wow. When I say cartooning, it's not illustration, it's cartooning, which I think is a little different. And this is great cartooning. Uh, mm, but the, I like the, whole, the, all, the whole book is an interview with Dimitri Jackson about what he's doing and things like that. He, uh, he has a, a comic called uh, Black Wax Boulevard, and it features music most of the time, but it's a, a comic. And uh, anyway, if you can, I'll put Micah's uh, info in the description. You might want to get this and read about Dimitri Jackson. So that's that. Maybe I'll have it by next one. I'm get, I've been getting, a, we've been getting a lot of stuff. We've got so much stuff here. Yeah. We've got enough stuff for a couple more episodes at least. Oh, yeah. We're going to be back very shortly because we've got a lot more uh, uh, already. We already have them in our possession. So uh, sneak preview. Here's some stuff by uh, Clark Dismeyer. Okay. I don't have that yet, but I yeah. think it's coming. It's not it's one. Coming. He sent me like six issues of a. <laughs> okay. Of a. Of this character who is mushy and mushy he's a giant mushroom okay. <laughs> there's a lot of other stuff but anyway this is maelstrom oh look at that cover look at that's, that cover that's mike probably, mike kaluda mike kaluda but this book is probably the best most professional looking book of this type that i've mm -hmm. seen this is amazing. Uh, this Russ is by for a while. Mm -hmm. Russ Maharis. Russ Maharis. He writes most of the articles in here himself. Does a tremendous amount of the uh, artwork in here, and he's an, of course, an excellent artist. Yeah. Well, there's there's a some funny stuff that he did there. Mm -hmm. With the uh, mighty Thor and Captain America. Yeah, uh, you know I've I've known Russ for decades, and uh, yeah. uh, he's a former uh, Air Force uh, guy and a soldier, and you know he uh, he writes some stuff. A lot of stuff uh, he writes is from that perspective of having been in the Air Force. Uh, I think he was Air a, 
There he is in some younger days right there at the drawing board. He was older than that when I first met him. (laughs) He was older than that. I never I first met him in Chicago Con also in 86, 87 in that that area. Um, But uh, yeah, Russ Russ is great. He's a oh look at yeah fine talent work here. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's written most of the articles in here are by him. And, and there's Russ, a lot of articles. <laughs> oh, he's talking about Gene Simmons Gene there. Simmons, or, yeah. Uh, Gene Klein. Who uh, actually drew cartoons. He actually was involved in small press in the late yes, 60s and early 70s. Yes, I had 70s. no idea. Mm-hmm. I uh, saw Gene Simmons on an airplane one time. I was getting on the plane, and he was sitting in the very first seat with one of the other guys from KISS. Uh-huh. And I had to stop kind of because the line getting in the plane stopped and I stumbled forward and almost fell in his lap. <laughs> <laughs> but he never even looked up. He didn't even acknowledge that I was there. Yeah. He just kept his head down like that. <laughs> I think by that time he was used to dealing Pretty with crowds. at that time, yeah. 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 <laughs> So Gene Simmons, uh, I saw Kiss live in the late 70s with the original lineup after they reunited mm-hmm. uh, at the Orlando uh, Arena here, which is, it's not called that anymore. I think it's called the TJ Waterhouse or something like that. Mm. I haven't been there in so long, I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. So, But yeah, he used to be involved in comics. And um, yeah, interesting. So Russ writes all about that, gives us some history. Another Russ, Russ Maharis illustration. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, he's a real pro. Complete with <laughs> dripping blood. E. Yeah. 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 And Russ has gotten better over the years. You know, he was always good. But he was man. always good. I think I did, you know, I, I detected in the early days, I would detect a slight Kirby influence. It wasn't a Kirby influence from the 60s. It was more like a Kirby influence from... Maybe the early 60s, but the mid 60s, but he was influenced by that. Mm-hmm. But he grew on to develop his own style and he got better and better. Um, He's got a couple interesting things in here. I'm going to go back to the front mm-hmm. where he talks about his interest in comic sketch cards. And the first one he got interested in was the Mars Attack. Mars Attacks. Yeah. The classic uh, those series. Were, I guess, bubblegum cards at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. From and the he does an article movie. about that. But then in the back, he talks about the art of sketch cards, talking yeah. about how to do them. And he was actually contacted by Tops. Yes, uh, he was. Tops. That's what it says. Does yeah. it, it asks to and he did, he did work for Tops. Card. Yeah, he did work for Tops. Yeah. And he did a, apparently he did a lot of work. I missed it. I wish I didn't, you know, but mm-hmm. here's a, and this isn't even, this isn't the Mars attacks cards, but this is a picture of some of the stuff he did uh, for DC comics uh, mm-hmm. sketch cards. Yeah. Look at that. And Amazing. Good gosh. Look how, look in, in beautiful full color, mm-hmm. dynamic, exciting. And wow. Yeah. Distinctive. Yeah. So Fantastic. I didn't work. know Russ was doing. You know, I lost track. I lost track. Russ, I lost contact with you a while back, and I'm glad to see you have prospered. <laughs> <laughs> he so did the back great. cover. It's really great. He did the back cover also. I'm getting a mm-hmm. reflection on it, but uh, yeah, in 2019, Russ Maharis. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. There we go. Yep. This is quite a publication. This is number nine with no price. <laughs> I don't see. I think a price. it's like I think I think it's about I think it's nine dollars. Okay, because I didn't see a price. Yeah. It's not on the cover. I'm pretty sure it's, it's number nine. Dollars. Number. Okay, we back. found out that uh, Maelstrom is twelve dollars postpaid, and you can get it on eBay. So great. Right. Order from Russ Maharis. It's well worth it. Well yeah. worth it. Oh, yeah. That, thing. Like I say, one of the most professional books I've seen. Amazing. Yeah, I'm still uh, 
Oh, oh, it's got a great, you know, there's a, there's a great picture in here. It's from, um, you know, Russ, uh, he was with the Air Force for many, many years, and he became an advisor. Uh, later, he became an advisor. He writes about this in the issue, um, sort of a, an advisor on motion pictures and comics and stuff uh, for the Air Force, uh, for people who are interested in getting it right. In fact, there was a... <laughs> I, I think uh, it, around the year 2000 or 2002. Okay, I don't, I don't have the exact article right here. I'm looking at the same picture. There you go. There he where, is. Where, where, where is it? Russ right Harris. Yeah. With the original Captain America shield that's used in a Captain America, the Winter Soldier. He, as a matter of fact, he may have been Captain America. I'm not sure. Might be. He might be. He's lived that kind of life. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, Russ is a great guy, and uh, he served his country as well. And he was an advisor on Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Wow. Uh, he talks about, in one of these articles here, he talks about uh, uh, how a group of uh, comics professionals uh, were invited uh, to this Air Force base, uh, uh, Air Force Base uh, for a tour and uh, how, you know, they explain to uh, these people who are writing stories uh, how to get it right. You know, what was, uh, you know, what mm -hmm. the facts were and, you know, so they don't write stories that are, you know, so it makes sense. Yeah. 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 In the early 2000s, Marvel Comics was invited. They were supposed to show up, but they didn't show up. They canceled like two days ahead. DC Comics uh, sent a bunch of people uh, Archie Comics uh, mm. sent some people and uh, Russ was able to give them a tour Russ and his friends his uh, uh, compadres were able to give them a tour of the of the base and explain a lot of stuff that wow would, uh, you know make for more accurate storytelling sure sure so, That's, so that oh, I didn't get a chance maybe to read that one but uh that whole article's in here? About yeah, that. it's in there. It's in there. Yeah. Like yeah, Russ was, a, so Russ had a great, Russ had an influence. Yeah, on he sure did. Superhero movies and television series and everything. You know what? After the year 2000, Russ was involved with that. What's interesting to me is uh, this is number nine for the spring of 2022. I can't imagine how, how far back they go because this seems like it would take a year to to write all this. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the first issue might have been in 1972. Oh, I, I okay, so it does go but back a ways. He, he goes way back. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. like me. Yeah. yeah, and me. Like yeah. us. Us. <laughs> <laughs> he goes back a ways. Yeah. And Russ is uh, as talented and uh, you know. He's in, as enthusiastic, and uh, he's just, he's carrying on. Uh, he's not slowing down at all. That's good. That's and, good. Uh, that's good to see. Some beautiful work. Man, he's yeah. an excellent artist, that's for sure. He, oh, that's something else. I mean, I keep finding stuff. There's so <laughs> much stuff in here. I saw that Steve Canyon. Steve Canyon, and apparently Russ, actually, uh, he drew this. Okay, let me look at that because maybe and I milk, did not catch milk, that. Milk Kniff uh, died uh, mm -hmm. a couple of decades ago, but Russ actually uh, drew an episode of Steve Canyon. I believe that's right. I think this is Russ's artwork. Hmm. And he did it for the Air Force for something, but um, 60th anniversary comic strip was published simultaneously by Air Force Times, Army Times, Navy Times, and Marine Corps Times. So, hmm. look, and he did this? Yeah. I wrote good. and drew a fully authorized Steve Canyon U.S. Air Force 60th anniversary comic strip. Excuse me. That is I pretty cool. Ginger ale in between. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, what? so this is brilliant. This is brilliant. I mean, oh yeah, wow. Russ can draw in different styles. Yeah, he can draw in different genres, and uh, this is just terrific work. And you know, look at Steve and, Canyon there. Look at that in that panel. That looks wow. like Steve Canyon. I mean, that's perfect. Just perfect. Wow. Yeah. That so, is amazing. 
Great well, stuff in here. So he's been involved in a lot of stuff, and um, yeah. after all these years, he hasn't slowed down a bit, and he just keeps getting <laughs> better and better. Russ, we're proud of you, my friend. Yeah, he's really. As great as ever. In fact, greater than ever. So. <laughs> well, I think Is that's flattering all... you too much. <laughs> I think that's all we have for this episode. Yeah. But make sure you subscribe and click that bell notification so that you know when our next uh, episode is coming up. And if you'd like your comics uh, highlighted on our show, featured, whatever you want to call it, um, you need to send me a copy and Steve a copy, which is kind of a pain, but that's the only way we can do it. <laughs> so it's worth uh, it because we give great reviews. Well, we try and promote <laughs> the comic rather than tear the comic down. Absolutely, I mean, absolutely. I, we're, here to, we're here to serve you. Anybody, to promote small press. Anybody who does this kind of thing uh, puts a lot of work into it, no matter how talented they are or how talented we think they are, it doesn't matter. Um, once you come up with a story in your mind and you illustrate it, that's a comic, and as far as I'm concerned. I'll say something really quick here before okay. we go. Um, uh, my friend Rob Cooley, um, who has the most distinctive style, I'll show it right here. Uh -huh. um, but um, he, you know, he sent me a message and he said that uh, you know, his copier was broken down and uh, there wasn't a Kinko's nearby or anything. So he had a problem. And I decided to help him out. He sent me a complete issue of A Strange and Cha Chaotic World, number 15. Mm. And uh, I, just, I said, you know, what the heck? This is a pal. And this is what small press is about. You know, we, mm -hmm. we promote each other. We encourage each other. And I went ahead and printed the thing for him. And this will be printed it up for him. A oh, copy great. Form. So this great. will be out very shortly. Maybe maybe we'll talk about that in the next video. Okay. Later. That'd be great. But, uh, I just mailed the copies uh, to Rob, and he'll be mailing those out shortly. And I sent mm -hmm. one to you too, Larned. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. Looking forward to that. And like I say, we've got a number of comics for the show uh, next time. Um, so make sure you uh, keep an eye on us. We'll be right back probably in another week. So uh, that that's it for this one. And we will see you next time. Well, welcome to another episode, episode 20 of Talking Small Press Comics with Steve Keeter and myself, Larna Justin. So once That's again, we've got a bunch home. of comics to talk about. Kind of excited. Uh, I think we ought to jump right into it. <laughs> Here's the first okay. one. Okay. This is the first one we're looking at. And this is Terry Flippo's Axel and Alex. And what I noticed about this, I wanted to say something about this. Small press comics are competing with so many other things. I mean, movies, television, uh, comic books, graphic novels, you name it. Small press comics are probably at the bottom of that list. So you have to be innovative to be able to do something different. And I think Terry has done it with this crossover series. There's four books in this crossover series. And he's done something you couldn't do in a movie. You couldn't do it on a TV show. His characters have actually gone into limbo and they are traveling in limbo looking for their creator. Now, not the normal creator you would think about. They're looking for the creator that drew them and invented uh -huh. them. So he's an artist and that's what they're looking for. And the, these mm -hmm. four uh, issues, there's four issues, are their travels all through 
time and space looking for their creator. And what they run into is all kinds of small press uh, comic people, characters, comic characters that other people have come up with, and they run into them all. Didn't you so they're traveling, to, they're traveling to a small press multiverse. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're traveling <laughs> right. and meeting all kinds of small press characters that, you know, yeah. other artists have created. Yeah, there's a good example. example of a lot of them are on the third issue. Mm -hmm. um, Terry Flippo, there's a. I have to keep, I have to look back. Uh, he's got a list of everybody. Uh, yeah. There's Miracle Force uh, by Jerry Smith. Here they are. They make an appearance in that third issue. Um, there Step, is um, Steppenwolf is there. Mm -hmm. By Byron Black. Uh, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Roman Steppenwolf, Lady Spectra, and Sparky. They're in here somewhere uh, by uh, J. Kevin Carrier. Isn't the Raven in there also by Steve yeah. Keeter? Uh, he is in there. That was a surprise yeah, to yes. me. I didn't know about that one. Yeah. Where, where is he? Let me find him. <laughs> okay, find the Raven. Surprise. Um, but um, if I'd known you know, that sooner, well, you know, I'm not. Um, Terry, you didn't tell me you were going to use my character. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you told any of the guys. It's a but surprise it's okay. for everybody. Okay, I'm, I'm actually I'm very flattered. And I'm very honored. And I and he did the um, let's see the Raven. Uh, he does the costume redesign Raven, uh, which uh, Doug uh, Doug Freeman redesigned the costume. Uh huh. Um, and I can't find that page for the life of me. Well, you never can find what you're looking for. I know. There he is. All the time, but, um, uh, they're traveling through, and they come across the raven. And right away, I was reading through this, and I saw this, and I said, wait a minute. <laughs> I know that guy. And and he does, uh, and Terry, he does give us credit at the end. He gives everybody credit yeah. uh, for the characters they created. And, uh, and Terry's artwork story. is terrific. As always. Yeah, yeah he's always been such an excellent artist. And he uh, he just he just loves doing small press comics. Oh, and man. He says something and, uh, about, uh, the time it here. takes to draw these, I mean, um, he puts a lot of detail into his drawings and uh, always. And they're just terrific. And, but it's such a cool idea because... You know, you think everything's been done and all that. Well, this is completely different. And it's well worth, and I don't know um, what kind of a price he has on these. I don't think he says, but I would send them, you know, five or six dollars and get maybe uh, all four of them. I don't know. Yeah, the Just color guess, covers are outstanding. Yeah. Here's some action art in black and white from the inside of a. Uh, Crossover Part Four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Axel and Alex. Uh, Axel is a, a robot, thus Axel, and Alex is Alex uh, his is buddy. Boy. Yeah. And he's been doing now, these comics for a long, long time. I don't, Axel. It would be great to be able to give away the ending, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I had a lot to say about the ending, but I can't say it because it would ruin it for everybody else. So I'm not going to tell you the ending. You'll have to figure that out. You have to yeah. buy the books or send for them or. Ask Terry for them or trade for them or do something. Get them and find out what happens with all these characters. Okay, I got a price. I got a price. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, he sent me a, a message, note here. I still have a few copies of each book remaining. Folks can order all four for $15. Okay. Check. So, uh, he has a PayPal, a JM. FLIP4, JMFlip4 at Verizon.net, so you can order it uh, online. But uh, $15 a ship, so probably about okay. $6 or $4 uh, per issue. Yeah, okay. And, yeah. Well worth and it. And I like, I like what uh, Tony says at the end, at the end of the fourth issue. Uh, he has an editorial. At the end of it, he says, this story is dedicated to small press creators everywhere who mm -hmm. create life on the page every day, not for fame or fortune but out of love for our chosen medium. Keep on doing what you love. There you go. That's, 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 that's in some small press. 
Yeah, when I met, when I try to mention that once in a while, I come up like I'm at work, you know, and, mm-hmm. and people are like, what do you do in your spare time? Well, I, you know, I do comics and stuff. And so then they say, what? They always say, do you make any money at it? And I'm like, <laughs> 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 well, once, you know, it's to, it's once I to did uh, a seminar at our local library uh, on small press comics, and the main question was, how much money can you make? I said, you can't make a dime, nothing. You won't make, you'll cost yourself money, but you won't make any money at all. At that mm-hmm. point, most everybody quit listening to me. <laughs> right. They don't get it. They don't get it. They don't get it. <laughs> yeah, but if you're a small press creator, you get it. You know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's, there's thousands of us, you know, and stuff. And uh, you know, in the old days, everybody was like aspiring to work for DC or Marvel or whatever, one of the big yeah. companies, you know. Well, that's like, that's years, like uh, becoming a professional baseball player. You have the same chance. That's <laughs> true. Really you have about the same chance. Yeah. yeah. And you realize not everybody can do that. Not everybody's going to yeah. make it to that. But you yeah. but you may make it to a level, at least up to that or, or better. A lot mm-hmm. of small producers are as good or better. I mean, seriously, there's mm-hmm. some of the greatest artists around are in the small press. They're not in the mainstream comics. And there are some yeah. crappy artists in mainstream comics, too, you know. Well, let's, look so, at, let's look at this one. Yep. Now, that's a small press comic. Now, look at that. That's Rob Haynes. Rob Haynes. And my old buddy, uh, Randy Reynaldo. Uh, Randy mm-hmm. Ronaldo is the artist, and the story is about Rob Haynes and his adventures. But look at the artwork once again. Yeah. It's and, definitely, I've known Randy for a long time. Uh, yeah. we, met at the, we met at the uh, Chicago convention, not the Chicago convention, the San Diego convention, 20 years after the Chicago convention, about 10 years ago. There's a video up somewhere of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, but uh, Randy, he's 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 always been a brilliant artist. Though. He's a, he's a yeah. former member of the UFO from way back, I guess <laughs> the seventies or the eighties, maybe maybe more of the eighties. But uh, this is you know, sort of influenced by Steve Canyon. Uh, you can I see would a lot say of a little him. bit, maybe maybe a yeah. little, yeah. Great yeah. story. Um, and, uh, switches between World War Two and the present time. Uh, right. Rob Haynes, he works for a, sort of a secret service, a security mm-hmm. intelligence called Justice International uh, with a few other people. And there's a lot of intrigue going on here. And the story does switch uh, yeah. from World War Two. Yeah, there's and, a, uh, Nazi gold uh, involved and, uh, you know, a lot of intrigue. Of him, you see him on the cover. Sergeant Haynes and Hell Patroon. A, a hell of a platoon uh, uh-huh. who were influenced uh, by, uh, I believe, Sergeant Rock. He mentions it somewhere in there. Sergeant oh, Rock and the NBC okay. War Comics. Yeah. Yes. So, um, um, but, you know, Rob, Rob yeah. has a clean style, uh, but it's very much, uh, very much influenced by Milt Kniff, I believe. Mm-hmm. And always has been, th- this story's gone on for years and years and years, you know. Uh, Very good. It's uh, 24 pages long, uh, yeah. very professionally, you know. Right. They're actually looking for Nazi gold. Yeah. They're, uh, that's why it switches back and forth between mm-hmm. World War II and the present yeah. time, because uh, the Nazi gold didn't go away. It's still around, and they're looking for it. <laughs> They're looking for, and there's these neo Nazis, yeah. uh, one of whom, his grandfather, uh, was uh, around back in those days in Germany, and uh, you know, they're in France, and they're looking for this gold. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that guy's it, grandson looks exactly like he did. It shows him exactly in like World him. War Two, and then the grandson. And they, they look yeah. at him. Yeah. And it's a classic battle of good versus evil, and Rob yeah. Rob runs into evil, and he runs. And like, here, here, they you know they they tried to knock his car off the road. They didn't. They did in fact knock his car off the road, and he survived that. Yeah. yeah. Great story. Later Dude, on, he ends up in the hospital. Well. There's a little bit of a love triangle in here too. This is number mm-hmm. twenty-two, by the way. So there's a bunch mm-hmm. more. And this one is three ninety nine U.S. and four ninety nine in Canada, where everything costs more. 
And I never knew, I never knew, I, I learned about Rob and, I mean, uh, Randy and uh, Rob Himes and WCG Comics, but he never really spelled it out until now. I never knew that st- that stood for War Comics Group. I yeah, never War knew. Comics Group, yeah. yeah. You know, I knew that Rob, Hop, Rob Haynes was kind of an adventurer and everything, but uh, uh-huh. I didn't know, you know. That, uh, yeah, it's got it right across the top. Such a War factor Comics. in this comic. And it's it's extremely well written, extremely well drawn, and yeah. uh, just a little triumph from a great artist and writer. Yep, yep, very well done, beautiful. And now for yep. something completely different. <laughs> That's for sure. Completely different. This is. <laughs> meanwhile. Meanwhile. Meanwhile, volume number 10. Now, I'm not sure how to explain this. Um, It's from Ringling College, because Gary Barker is, uh, uh, is he a professor there at Ringling College? Yes, he is. Mm-hmm. He's, he's a teacher, and um, okay. each, uh, I think every semester, uh, they have a new group of students, and, uh, you know, they have courses in comic book art and illustration and stuff. And it's, it's a Ringling College of Art and Illustration, so they do all kinds of illustration. Uh, but uh, one thing they do is they have all the students um, create a comic together. And yeah. each student contributes two pages. Okay. And uh, they can go anywhere they want to it. Thus, you know, you have something going on. And uh, meanwhile, something else is going on for another two weeks two pages and meanwhile something else go, goes on and and it, none of it is really connected at all it's oh. just an it's exploration actually, of all these different fantasy worlds yeah it doesn't you know you can't really follow any kind of a story most of it does not have any uh, word balloons or anything like that but it's just beautiful the artwork is beautiful it For just students Stunning artwork by the students. Anything you look at, and it's beautifully reproduced on, on right. uh, quality stock paper in full color. Yeah. yeah. It's and really, you know, each person has their own visage, uh, yeah. vision, and that's what it's really all about, is showca- showcasing these students and their different visions. Yeah. Uh, comic book artwork. And uh, there's just so much great stuff here. It's hard to go. I mean, it goes from there's a kind of a scary cover there on that one. Yeah, that's number twelve. And what's cool about it is he does tell you who the artists are. And if you mm-hmm. look on the page here, I know it's, it shows well, up on here very well, but. Right on that page, it will tell you who the artists are and which stories they did. But it's part of the artwork, <laughs> the way he did that. Very cool. Yep. A lot of great stuff here. Lots of neat stuff. Uh, Here's a lady who loves it's just kind of a flower. I would, I would call it an art zine, you know, is what it really is. It's not a, not a story, but it is an art zine, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. And it shows off the students' work, but I, you know, their work is a little bit similar, unless I'm seeing some of the same artists over. But uh, some of the work is similar. There's some dinosaur. I mean, it goes through all kinds of different fantasy scenarios. Right. Anything that's in that particular uh, creator's uh, mind. Yeah, you know, they. They can show it off here in the issue, and then they put it all together. And he's and uh, really, uh, Gary told me there's no cover price on this. And if you want to order any copy, I would suggest uh, just I would say, whew. I mean, well, I would I'll send my his, uh, copy, I'll put his contact, <clears throat> I'll put his contact info down in the description. Uh, it is really yeah. College of Art and Design, and uh. Write to them, and uh, they may send you some of these, and they're really, really beautiful. Look at the back cover of this. Yeah. Really yeah. neat. I mean, there's not a bad illustration in the entire no. uh you know, No. no. Uh, just beautiful. I, mean, I wonder how you qualify to get into that school. 
I wonder if anybody can just get in or how goes from cartoony artwork to creepy artwork. Yeah. Uh, to fantastic science fiction artwork uh, to do all sorts of stuff. And uh, uh, highly recommended. Uh, as you know, Gary Barker, uh, not only is he a teacher, he's also one of the artists on the Garfield uh, uh, newspaper strip. Uh, mm -hmm. He's been doing the Sunday Garfield strip for years. Oh. And he also drew uh, uh, the Garfield comics for a few years. I have a few issues of Garfield that uh, he sent to me, and uh, he signed them. And uh, uh, I, I treasure those issues. Oh, Gary's sure. yeah. not only he's a great guy, a great artist. He Sometimes he pops up at a convention. Mm -hmm. I first met him at the con uh, back in uh, 2004 or 5 or 6, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. And just a great guy. And... Um, um, you couldn't pick a better guy to be a better influence to a bunch of people. There you uh, go. Yeah. Fantastic imagination to create fantastic comics. Here's a, here's a guy. He's got who his doesn't students himself. doing some great work. So. Uh, <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, Something's indeed. happening. Yep. Yep. Now, do you want to know what happened to me today? Oh yeah, of course. We can change the subject for a moment. We're, out of, we're yeah. not really out of comics. We got a lot of comics. We got comics, but we kind of hold some of them back uh, <laughs> for the next show. <laughs> we don't want to no, use everything up in one show, you know. <laughs> I've been ordering stuff from Amazon.com for a while, and I ordered some comic book bags. Uh -huh. I did finally find them, but for some reason, you know about porch pirates, right? Yeah. Um, Pretty decent neighborhood, so you don't, I don't think anybody, there's any any intentional porch pirates. But I, a couple of the packages that I've ordered have ended up at my neighbor's house next door. Um, the the numbers on the house are very similar, so mm -hmm. the mailman keeps getting mixed up. Mm -hmm. And uh, yesterday I saw this package had been delivered with these comic book bags, but I didn't get it. And I and I says, I wonder if. I wonder if it went over there again, because the last time uh, the mailman delivered something, I walked by there and I saw it propped up against their front door. So I walked yeah. by and grabbed it. That's my name. That's my package. So I yeah. back to the house. Anyway, I found these comic bags this morning outside uh, uh, the neighbor's house uh, in the driveway. Oh, my yeah. God. And they had opened it up and they looked inside. They wanted to see what it was. I guess they didn't want comic book bags. They, so they didn't, just they didn't bring it over to you? No, they, they didn't bring it over. got your name on it, and they didn't bring it mm. over to you. That's well, I'm, nice. going to have, I'm going to have to mention this to those people. I would think so. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm the one that gets the comic book bags. I'm yeah. the comic book guy that lives next if door. If it's a comic book bag, it goes to you, not them. <laughs> <laughs> Holy mackerel! Another thing I want to mention: I just got a package, and uh, this isn't for review or anything, but I just got a package from an old friend of mine. Uh, Brent Anderson, mm -hmm. and Brent, uh, some of you may know Brent Anderson. Well, he, he did. He used to draw uh, comics back in the 1970s. He, drew, uh, he did work well. He he's been drawing ever since the 1970s. He's still drawing. Um, he did the cover for one of my first zines, Mantra Number One. Oh, way back then. Way back. Uh huh. He used to be in a, back in 74, 75. What was it? Mm -hmm. uh, he also did the cover for Mantra number three. Wow. Ooh, look at that. You know? but, in, but after that, uh, Brent, uh, he went pro, quite frankly. And he's been doing work for Marvel and DC mm. and Eclipse Comics, Image Comics, Now Comics, Pacific Comics. Uh, he did KSAR uh, for a Marvel. And uh, you know, I just happened to have his biography. <laughs> Up on my other computer screen, but I just wanted to say, you know, I, I sent him a few comics. Of, I got a hold of his address, mm -hmm. and uh, I sent him a few of my recent comics, and it it brought back um, memories to him of uh, the stuff that he used to do. He also did the X Men, uh, God Loves, Man Kills, the graphic novel. Uh, he did a lot of stuff. Um, uh, Astro City. Which he oh, did with Kurt wow, Busiek, yeah. which yeah. had the cover of uh, Alex Jones. That was uh, Brent Anderson's artwork. Wow. Um, but he's an old pal of mine, and I haven't heard from him in a, a lot of years. Mm -hmm. And um, again, I think I got either I got an email from him or something, but but we uh, got back in touch, and 
uh, I sent him a few of my comics, and he sent me a few of his stuff. It's like wow. these are Ashton comics, comics which I don't think have ever appeared anywhere really. I think he just made these, and they haven't been copyrighted or anything. But he sent me a few of these comics of his, and it's my old pal Brent. Wow. You know. Wow. And uh, and he signed all these. That's yeah. pretty nice, you know. Sign these wow. for Steve at the top, and then oh, sign yeah. it at the bottom. Wow. And uh, it looks like he does some stuff that's kind of like small press stuff, stuff that he. That's just what I was going to say. Do. It looks like he, you know, self published that. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't. Wow. As he said yeah. they were Ashcan comics, and Ashcan comics are comics that haven't been copyrighted or anything. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just stuff he did for the heck of it. Wow. Nice to know that you know. Look at the cover on this one. Oh, neat! Wow. But, you know, he's doing stuff, and um, still is a. Well, I knew I knew he was a great artist. Um, I think Kazar from Marvel. I think it was the first professional comic work he did back in the seventies. Mm. He used to uh, draw uh, barbarian Conan type of stuff. Uh, so it was good to hear from him. I just wanted to mention that, Brent. If you're out there watching, I just want to mention how much I do appreciate it. Yeah, uh, really nice. Yes, I'll be good to see your work. You know. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Okay. Just something well, I thought I'd I thought I'd toss out there. Okay, we have got a next time a big show. So uh, this one was a little. Uh, fewer comics but next time we're back with a bunch <laughs> so make sure you uh, subscribe and mm -hmm. use that bell notification uh, button so that you know you get an email when our next video is up because it will yeah, probably be again, up in about a week <laughs> once again folks we have to apologize if there's any technical problems if especially the sound uh, I'm, I'm using my cell phone on this because I had a problem with my laptop if the sound seems a little muddy, we'll have that we'll have that corrected by next time. Uh, uh, I also had a little problem. I have a webcam that I normally use. This is it, but it wouldn't work. It just did not come on. So I'm using this is through my laptop. Uh, probably looks a little different to me. It looks a little dark. Maybe I can fix that in post. I don't know. But anyway, hopefully next time we will be back without any problems, <laughs> and we will see you then. Bye. Yes, indeed. Live long and prosper.